Good evening, guys. Welcome to Life Apollos. Happy to have you here and happy Friday. Another Monday through Friday schedule achieved. It's a very intriguing episode tonight. We're going to be diving deep into the heart of automotive culture, the very lifeblood of what we do uh, to discuss some big changes coming down. And I don't want to say it's going to be for good, but it's going to be pretty significant to discuss. Additionally, we're going to be discussing some pretty crazy whistle and diesel news and much, much more tonight. And as always, guys, if you appreciate the grind, if you want to help me out personally, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We love having you here as part of Beard Nation. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, Beard Nation, welcome to your news of the day. First up tonight, guys, a little bit of an update on our big video from yesterday describing a number of automotive YouTubers, Daily Driven Exotics, Whistle and Diesel, a Street Speed 717 that look to have privated or removed a massive number of videos equating to either tens of millions or in Whistle and Diesel's case, hundreds of millions of views being stricken from their channels. Now we had our own speculation on exactly why uh, these automotive creators were getting rid or at least like uh, privating a massive number of videos, but a number of you had some pretty good ideas as well. Uh, one particular message that we got yesterday pointed to a brand new swearing policy for YouTube as a whole. We looked it up, The Verge had a great article on it, uh, essentially saying that back in November, YouTube said it will now limit ads or completely demonetize a creator's video if they swear within the first 15 seconds. That may not seem like a huge deal on its own, but it also seems to apply to every video YouTubers have ever created and they've done a whole lot of swearing. So could it be that the new swearing policy is having uh, sort of a havoc effect on automotive YouTube? I think that might be uh, the case for some automotive YouTubers, for sure. Um, we never really swear on our channel here, so we're kind of in the clear, in the green for that. Uh, but most of you guys in the comments yesterday said it had to do with Kevin Van Voris's video over the last two weeks. Now, if you guys don't know what that video was, it was YouTuber house raided and arrested for YouTube car videos. These were years old videos and he was raided for it. That's a very simplified version of what happened, but a lot of people got really scared about about that. Street Speed 717 made an entire video discussing why he was no longer going to be doing it, linking it to the Kevin Van Voris videos. Uh, and we might also see the same thing uh, to some degree with Whistle and Diesel and Daily Driven Exotics, uh, both of which had tens of millions and in the hundreds of millions of views stricken from their channels over time. But anyway, I wanted to make sure we brought you guys at least two of your own ideas. Thank you so much for messaging them to me and on to our first news story of the day. Okay, so first up today, guys, I think a lot of us have already seen the new Dodge Charger Daytona SRT electric concept that was debuted uh, weeks or months ago at this point. But some new articles uh, released on Jalopnik and Car Scoops over the past couple of days have a lot of people uh, getting pretty upset and heated in the comment sections. Now, for those of you that have been paying attention uh, to the electric car world over the last couple of years, this is not going to be a giant shock to you, but it definitely is for some folks. Car Scoops titled Dodge will try to stop you from modifying their EVs. Dodge Dodge will offer upgrades and tuning packages through the Dodge Direct Connection program. Dodge Chief Executive uh, Tim Kuniskis, I don't even know how to pronounce that, my apologies, has revealed that the car manufacturer will not allow third-party tuners to modify the powertrains of its forthcoming EVs. The car maker has previewed its electric future with the Charger Daytona SRT concept at the recent SEMA show announced a host of Dodge Direct Connection performance upgrades that will be offered for the production model. When asked, by muscle cars and trucks, whether tuners would be able to work their magic on the EV powertrain, uh, Tim gave a direct answer. His quote was, no, I'm sure somebody will try to hack it, but that will be exclusive to direct connection. And quite frankly, that's one of the reasons we feel very strongly about what I call the crystals. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that made me laugh, he said. The crystals are tied to the car, tied to the VIN, tied to the ECM of that car. It's specific for that tune, for that car, because we want to funnel this all through our control and we want to funnel it through our direct connection and power broker program to support that body of people to make sure that we're controlling everything that happens in these cars. So you might be asking yourself, what are these crystals that he's talking about? The article goes on to say that the crystals that Tim is referring to represent the different tunes that the company will offer for the SRT Banshee EV powertrain 
train. For example, the entry level 456 horsepower version can be upgraded to 535 horsepower with the E Stage 2 Crystal. Additionally, Tim's saying, now we don't want to lock the cars and say you can't modify them. We just want to lock them and say modify them through us so we know that it's being done right. Now we wanted to do that because we'd rather spend our time coming up with more modifications for you instead of literally trying to whack-a-mole the hackers. So in a nutshell, extraordinarily bad news for the tuning and modifying world, uh, but it shouldn't come as that big of a surprise. Uh, but the comment sections uh, on these particular articles are just absolutely crazy. People are extraordinarily furious with Dodge for locking the performance of these vehicles uh, basically behind a paywall. Now, obviously, uh, we have talked a great deal about electric vehicles on our channel over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, a lot of states are moving toward only allowing those said states to sell electric vehicles past 2035 is the main targeted year. Um, so we've got some time on this, but you know, I feel like time flies these days for whatever reason. Maybe I'm measuring in pandemic years or something like that. Uh, but for whatever reason, it feels like it's not that far to me. With the adaptation of more electric vehicles and companies going out of their way to make sure that third parties cannot touch uh, the powertrains of said vehicles, I don't know, this could be really the end of tuning and modifying engines in any particular way. And that feels like it's the lifeblood of a lot of what at least automotive YouTube has been doing since its inception. But, and I'll play devil's advocate here, maybe consumers just really won't care. Maybe they'll be happy they can get a horsepower upgrade uh, simply by buying a brand new crystal for their vehicle. I'd be very curious to know how you guys feel about this. Uh, are you excited about it? You get options like straight from the pack and you can go right through the automotive manufacturer. I mean, there is there is a plus side here. Uh, you know, a lot of the time when you tune the engine of your car, you void the warranty. So maybe uh, there's an upside here. If you're going through the actual manufacturer, uh, you know, you won't have to void your warranty. I I'm looking for a bright spot here, guys. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it somewhere in the middle? And would you ever buy this particular vehicle? Is it on your list of cars to buy? Let me know in the comments below and on to our next story. Next up, guys, let's talk about Whistle and Diesel latest post, which has a, a great number of very interesting things going on. You're seeing the picture right now, the caption below saying something in this picture cost $34,999, and I'm about to throw out my old work boots. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is essentially a scene from Back to the Future 2. Uh, those are the Nike uh, Air Mag Back to the Future shoes. Um, a lot of them, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about, uh, they cost about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 on the very low end. Uh, the upper end of them tend to be about $151,000. I would imagine there's much more sort of intricacies in where the price would sort of set, but I'm not a shoe guy. But I believe he actually bought them from uh, a big shoe guy on Instagram, uh, Harrison Neville, who said, thanks for coming by and buying the shoes. Please take care of them. They are my babies. So let's talk about what exactly is probably going to go down. About 10 months ago, we got this video here using $12,000 Air Dior's as work boots. I uh, got four and a half million views, obviously made back a good chunk of whatever money he was gonna have on that. A million views can equal significantly more than whatever he spent on those particular shoes. Uh, what's interesting about the Air Mags, guys, is, is from my understanding, and I, like I said, I'm not a big shoe guy generally, from my understanding, uh, the Air Mags, only 89 pairs of them were ever made as a tribute to the Back to the Future 2 premiere. So the entire issue gets into very interesting territory for me, and I wanna ask your opinion on it as well. So normally, I, I'm of the opinion that if you buy something, you should really be able to trash it or not, or do whatever you want with it. It's your money, it's your property, you know, have a ball. Now where things get a little bit interesting is in terms of the rarity of whatever item whistle Diesel is looking to destroy. Now we haven't dealt with that too much, but we're starting to get into a territory that's a little bit different. So with only 89 of these ever made, does it feel slightly more wrong to destroy something like that? Essentially a work of art. Uh, if there were only one of these pairs left and he wanted to destroy it, would it be good? Would it be bad? Is it still his property? He can do what he wants. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below, but I would imagine we have a very crazy video coming 
mean, uh, Whistle and Diesel has been on fire lately in terms of his content, uh, releasing not a ton of videos, but whenever he does, they're significantly higher in quality. Uh, there's been a big uptick from some of his early work. So let me know what you guys think. I mean, eventually I would imagine he's gonna try to buy a Bugatti Veyron or a Chiron or something like that. Will we see him trash a hypercar? It's all coming down at some point as his popularity continues to skyrocket. Let me know what you guys think about this particular conversation in the comments below. Next up guys, Stradman back in the saddle yet again uh, for the second time in January with a brand new video that everybody seems to love. The video is called Unboxing the Newest Lamborghini Hypercar Worth $3 million. Now, I don't know if I'd call the Lamborghini Countach the newer version a hypercar. It definitely doesn't have hypercar performance, but in terms of rarity, you can start to make the case there. I will say the spec of this particular Countach is probably the best spec that I've seen, although I am partial to the earlier launch white. But let me know what you guys thought about his video. Uh, Stradman seemingly back into it uh, from not being sick, from having a pretty significant absence almost a month total if I remember correctly, uh, but fans can stop praying for him because he's back doing what he loves. Also, a side question here. Uh, if you could take the Countach or any other Lamborghini, are you keeping the Countach? Or are you going like Reventon? Are you going uh, Veneno? I'd be very curious. What is the dream Lamborghini for you? I think it's Centenario for me, uh, but I guess I'm partial to sort of when I was brought up in the automotive and supercar world. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. On to our next story. Gotta mention Dustin. Williams yet again. A couple of days ago, we covered uh, sort of a night tour in Japan uh, with one of his cars, and we got another doozy for you guys. Uh, the ultimate car guy experience in Japan, uh, Car Meet in Tokyo Night Run. This is just awesome. I, I don't know what it is about Tokyo, about Japan, about the car scene over there. I'm kind of obsessed. I'm a little bit addicted. Uh, if you've not checked out Dustin Williams' channel before, these are the videos you have to put at the top of your priority list. Uh, they just don't get a any more like fun and any more raw than this in terms of automotive YouTube guys. But like I said, I am partial to Japanese car culture. So take it with a grain of salt guys. And folks, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you on Monday unless something absolutely crazy happens over the weekend. I'm just loving the new Monday through Friday schedule and most of you guys are too. Anyway, thanks so much. Make sure to sub to the channel if you feel like it. DM me on Instagram if you want to chat. I'll do my absolute best to get to you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on Monday. That's all I got. Bye.